When approaching the data from a titration experiment, it's always important to remember that these are stoichiometry problems. You end a titration at the equivalence point. The equivalence point of an acid-base reaction is the stoichiometric point. It's where you don't have any excess acid or excess base. So here are some data that was collected from the lab. We took 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. That was our analyte. That was what was in the Erlenmeyer flask. And I titrated it with 2.35 molar potassium hydroxide. So the potassium hydroxide would be what's in the burette. Before starting the titration, I read the volume of the burette as 1.22 milliliters. The potassium hydroxide is slowly added until you reach the equivalence point. You would do that by using an indicator like phenolphthalein. Once the indicator changes color, we stop the titration and we got a final volume of the burette of 34.86 milliliters. With this information, we should be able to figure out what the concentration of the hydrochloric acid was before we began this titration. We begin a titration problem as we would any stoichiometry problem. We start with a balanced equation. Here we are reacting hydrochloric acid, HCl, and potassium hydroxide, KOH. So we have a double replacement reaction. We have an Arrhenius acid base reaction. So the H is going to go with the OH to make water, as we would expect. And the K and the Cl are going to come together to make KCl, the salt. This is a good reaction because everything is a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. Now that we have the balanced reaction, the second step is to convert our data to moles. Let's take a look at what data we have. I know for my HCl I have 25 milliliters. And that's all I know about the HCl. My KOH I know to be 2.35 molar. The volume of KOH we used, we need to figure out from the burette. I know that I ended with 34.86 milliliters and I began with 1.22 milliliters. So if I take the difference in my volumes from the burette readings, 34.86 minus 1.22 milliliters, I get a volume of 33.64 milliliters. That's my volume of KOH. The question is asking for the concentration of the HCl. So if we have to convert to moles, we can convert my KOH to moles. Because remember, from the last unit, molarity is moles over liters. So I have 2.35 moles for every liter of KOH. And I want to know how many moles I have given the number of liters I have. Well, I have 33.64 milliliters of KOH. So that's going to be 0 0.03364 liters of KOH. So if I solve for X, I get 0 0.791 moles of KOH. So step one, we've written a balanced equation. Step two, we've converted the moles. Now I can use the moles of my KOH to find the moles of HCl. Remember, the equivalence point occurs at the stoichiometric point, when I have precisely the amount of acid to match the amount of base. And because this is a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, at the equivalence point, if I have 0.791 moles of KOH, I'm going to have 0.791 moles of HCl. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Well, now I have everything I need for my concentration. I'm going to look for molarity of HCl, which we said earlier is moles over liters. So for my HCl, I can take my moles, 0 0.791 moles, and divide it by my liters of HCl. Well, my liters of HCl are going to be 0 0.025 liters because I have 25 milliliters. And so for my HCl, I get 3.16 molar HCl. So as I stated before, these titration problems are just like the stoichiometry problems we did in the last unit. The text makes these even a little bit easier. They introduce this equation, MAVA equals MBVB. This might look familiar because it's similar to the dilution equation we learned in the last unit. M1V1 equals M2V2. The reason it looks familiar is because the concept is the same. 
in dilution, we said molarity times volume equals moles, and the moles at the beginning equals the moles at the end. Here, molarity times volume still equals moles, but here we're saying the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base, which in this problem was true because this is a one-to-one -one ratio. This equation only works if you have a one-to-one -one ratio between your acids and bases. Fortunately, in the homework tonight, you only have one-to-one -one ratios between your acids and bases, so this equation will be good to go. Another handy thing about this equation is that, just like the dilution equation, it doesn't matter what your units for volume are, as long as you're consistent. If you have milliliters on the left side and milliliters on the right side, they'll cancel out.